Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that your name be glorified as we begin a new week, as we begin a new book to us, and as we come to celebrate your love in our lives during this week. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, this week, we're actually going to look at some rather difficult readings, and they come to us from the book of Numbers. And we're going to look at a section of the book of Numbers that involves basically rebellion and response. And so it's going to be rather interesting. These are some of the more uh, fascinating readings from the book of Numbers. The, uh, the New American Bible Revised Edition divides the book of Numbers into three sections, and we're going to look at the middle section, which basically deals with uh, traversing the desert on the way to the promised land, and also that generation's loss of the promised land. So we're going to look at all of that. One of the things we want to understand is something that you will see very starkly in the Old Testament and more gently in the New Testament. And what that is, is people learning to trust in God. And this is something that we've got to do all the time, but it's a learning process and it can be rather difficult. For example, one of the things that Jesus says is fear is useless. What is needed is trust. Well, why does he have to say that? Because despite the entire history of the Jews, despite all that time, as he's speaking to the apostles, he is teaching them something that has to be learned over and over again, how to trust in the Lord. And it really shows how easy it is not to trust in the Lord or anybody else. And what's the first thing that people say you have to do is to learn, number one, who to trust, and number two, how to trust. And these two things are essential. But to learn to trust in the Lord is a long process. It's our whole life of process. And it's an important one that the Lord is constantly trying to teach us as he was trying to teach Moses, as he was trying to teach the apostles. So we're going to see this. And one of the things you really want to look at is I've said, I've said this before, and I've reminded people that uh, for, for some people, the concept of evolution is, uh, is, is is uh, controversial for them but the evolution that is controversial for them is biological evolution but you can clearly see a different form of evolution in the, the bible anyway and you clearly can see you can see that consistently in our own existence you can see the evolution of how we live our daily life from the early days when the pilgrims first landed in Provincetown and then in Plymouth to today where they wouldn't understand half of what we were doing because back then they didn't have the technology that we have today. So, and how did we get that there through an evolution of technology? So there is, there are forms of evolution. Well, another form of evolution that exists is an evolution of understanding. And we go back to something I've taught before about saying, Augustine and St. Augustine taught and St. Thomas Aquinas describes this that in the uh, the last line in the gospel of John is the line that Jesus did and and said so many things that there aren't enough books in the world to hold all those accounts. Well, what St. Augustine said 300 years later was that what it really means is that our understanding grows and therefore there wouldn't be enough books in our own mind to contain the information at the time that passage was written uh, in the Gospel of John. So 
our understanding grows. So as our understanding would have grown between the first century and the fourth century with St. Augustine, it grows with the fourth century to the, believe it was the 12th century with St. Thomas Aquinas, and then it grows from the 12th century to the present time. And so our understanding grows. So if we go backwards, even before the Gospel of of John, we're going to see that the Lord has to teach the Hebrews leaving Egypt a whole new way of understanding. Remember, they lived under Egyptian understanding at the time, and he has to teach them a whole new way of understanding and who he is as God, something they didn't fully comprehend when they left Egypt because they're now encountering God for the first time. So this plays itself very strongly in these passages this week. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony in Alston. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452, 617-297-7452. And don't forget our website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Check out our website. Uh, check out there. You can find our Substack newsletter. You can find the archives of the show. You can do all kinds of things over there at catholicaudiomedia.com. So let's switch back to uh, what we're looking at today, and this is from the 11th chapter in Numbers, and it's a famous passage I use a lot to help people understand the difficulties of living the life that the Lord has called us to. So Moses, obviously, has been called to be the leader of the Hebrews, leading them out of Egypt, but ultimately he's called to lead, lead them actually to the border of the promised land. And he needs to do this through two generations. So what he's doing is he's leading the people and they become a great burden because we understand they're grumbling. And that's considered one of the worst sins in the Bible. Oh, why are we here? Why are we? We could be back in Egypt right now. We could have all the bread we want. We could have this and we could have that. And remembering that line, pain has no memory. And of course, this wears Moses down. And this, this really makes everything difficult for Moses until finally he comes to the point where he literally says to the Lord, kill me now. I've had enough. And it's it's an important message for us to understand this. Kill me now, because what is he saying? The burden, which he says is part of this, the burden is too much for him. Why is it too much for him? It's not that God has put in this burden put this burden on his shoulders, he isn't bringing the burden to God, which he ultimately does by saying this. And the Lord responds to the Hebrews, and he makes sure that they have the food that they're always looking for. But understand this, this is a real struggle for Moses, and the only way he can ultimately Uh, continue in the struggle is to draw closer to the Lord. And that's a lesson for each and every one of us. If you are in a difficult situation, make sure you bring that situation to the Lord. Make sure you bring your struggles to the Lord. Make sure you bring everything to the Lord and let the Lord lead you where he's calling you. So this is an important distinction. And we want to understand that within the context of what is happening here. But we also want to understand it with the context of our own lives. If you're, as I said, if you're going through a difficult time, now what could that difficult time be? Maybe you're having a difficult time in your marriage right now. Maybe you're having a difficult time with um, one of your children. 
Uh, maybe it's t- coming close to the teenage years or you're well into the teenage years and you're having this this very common experience of this um, the this conflict of wills because your son or daughter is now coming to realize who they are and coming into their realizing of you know that they are adults or getting close to be adults and they're not understanding you're caring for them and so you have this button heads and they won't understand until maybe they're in their 40s but right now you have this 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 big uh struggle um and when you're going through this struggle this is what you bring to the lord at night because the lord has given you your son or daughter your son's and or daughters uh, to you to care for them. So you need to be bringing this to prayer as Moses learns. And there are times you may be like, I can't deal with this. You need to bring that to prayer. Prayer is an essential element of what it means to serve the Lord. And if you find yourself in this position, I can't take this anymore. That's the time you definitely have to bring it to prayer. We're going to talk more tomorrow. In the meantime, have yourself a blessed day. And this is Father Robert J. Carr saying we will see you tomorrow. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.